One of the things that makes Arlington such a special place is its devotion to the arts. Did you know that Arlington is home to over 500 artists and more than 50 arts organizations, galleries, and performance spaces? In fact, finding art on display in Arlington is as easy, well, it's as easy as going for a walk. Here we are in Roslyn, a very big and bustling urban neighborhood in Arlington, Virginia, and this is where we have the highest concentration of public art in the county. And today we're going to start by looking at Dark Star Park, the cornerstone of Arlington's public art collection. So Nancy Holt was really interested in using industrial materials when creating the sculptures in this park. She not only used concrete tunnels, but also created these spheres out of um, a sprayable concrete called gunite. It's a huge gun that actually shoots the concrete onto a form and slowly dries as it's formed. Um, Nancy Holt's also really interested in celestial things, the sun and natural patterns. And so, as you can see with the poles and the spheres, she relies on the sunlight to activate her sculpture. And she's also interested in the reflections that the spheres cast in the dark pools that are distributed throughout the park. Let's head on up across uh, Fort Myer Drive and visit the next piece, Boa's Body as the Family. We are at 1300 North 17th Street where we have uh, an installation by New York City artist Boaz Badia. This was a piece that was paid for by a private developer negotiated through the site plan process. So Boaz Badia is a New York City artist but he's originally from Israel. He grew up on the land and so geologic features are something that's very interesting to him even though he now lives in an urban setting in New York City. And he's inspired by the stone sidewalks and the stone edifices in New York City and decided that his primary um, material with which he wants to sculpt is blue stone, which comes in these stratified layers. He has tons of it delivered to his New York City studio, and he carves each individual slab and stacks them and then carves them as a single unit. And what we have here is a piece called the family, which is typical of the kind of work that Boaz Vadia does. Um, the figures in the sculpture, it represents a general family unit, but he's also interested in figures from the Old Testament. So this is actually David, Haggad, and Adonia. If you look up close at the sculpture, you can see that there, um, there's a little bit of moss growing on it. Some of the stone through rain um, is starting to decay, but he sees this as, as part of the process. It's an outdoor piece exposed to light, wind, rain, um, visitors, the touch of a human hand. He doesn't mind that kind of change that comes naturally when a sculpture is exhibited outside, exposed to the elements. So now we're going to head up the street and look at one of the most popular public art pieces in the collection, Ned Kahn's Liquid Pixels. So uh, on our way to Liquid Pixels, we're passing by a very prominent public art piece by local artist from Washington, D.C., Chris Gardner. This is called Cupid's Garden. He envisions this as the garden where Cupid grows his arrows and it was appropriately dedicated on Valentine's Day nearly 20 years ago. It's situated on a traffic island at the convergence of four different major streets, so the inclusion of arrows is reminiscent of traffic signs and action activity that really um, identifies this bustling neighborhood. So this piece by Ned Kahn, Liquid Pixels, is one of my absolute favorites, my personal absolute favorites in the collection. Ned Kahn is a California artist, and he is really fascinated with natural patterns, wind and light in particular. And so this piece, without wind and light, really would not be activated. And when you take a look at it, you'll see it consists of hundreds of thousands of small little one-inch uh, stainless steel discs that are on low friction hinges. And so when the wind and light passes over it, you actually see the wind patterns revealed. So it's really mesmerizing. You stare at it all day long. So one thing that a lot of people might not know is that Roslyn was built on bedrock. So you'll see a lot of the garage is actually above ground, which is the case with this particular building. And so garages are not always that attractive, and they also require ventilation. This particular piece, Liquid Pixel, solves two problems. It's very attractive, and it allows for ventilation of this parking garage. Okay, so that wraps up our public art tour for today. We've looked at four very exciting pieces, but join us next week and look at a few more great pieces in Roslyn.